Hello and welcome to Missio Talk. My name is Mark Chamberlain and this is a forum to discuss issues of ministry and mission in the Christchurch Diocese. Uh, its purpose is to resource clergy and, and churches and to develop and strengthen the ways in which we participate in God's great mission to the world. Uh, today uh, I have guests uh, Nick Mountford and Eddie O'Connor with me and our topic is um, the way prayer relates to the mission of the church. And so my first question um, uh, is what has prayer got to do with regeneration? I think that's a really good question. One of the things I find is when I read the Gospels, and Eddie might have thoughts about this, but you see Jesus at prayer a lot, um, and I think he would go up a mountain or he'd go into the desert or he'd make sure he was alone. Mm -hmm. And I think in his ministry, he regenerated himself by praying, and I think in his prayers, he um, got energy and direction for his ministry. Yeah, I think that's bang on. I, th I think as well, you know, prayer is fundamentally about your relationship with God. It's like the real lived experience. It's two-way communication. Yes. <clears throat> and so if, it's so important for the church to be leading people into that mm -hmm. because it, I mean, a relationship without communication isn't a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if the people of God don't have that relationship, mm -hmm. then what are we regenerating? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've touched on it already a wee bit, but would you like to enlarge on, 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 on the question, you know, why is prayer so important? Well, I think it's about um, a relationship with God. Yeah. And when I think of the relationship I have with my wife, yes. in order to have a good relationship, I need to spend time with her. Yes. <coughs> um, she carved the date of our wedding anniversary on my wedding ring, so I wouldn't forget the wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to forget God. And I think prayer is about re generating, renewing that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think as well it's about the experience of God. You know, like that's where you really experience the mystery of God, right, is in mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. And if people don't have that experience, it's hard to know what, like it's hard to kind of, I guess, connect with the, the spirituality of the church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think there was a, um, a Benedictine monk John Main, who talked about quite a lot of people's experience of church, is this, like having propositions delivered from the pulpit. Right. <laughs> and if they just have that, then it's, it's not really a church, yeah. whereas prayer is where you experience the mystery of God. Yeah. And I think that's primarily the main thing we're here to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So um, it's a frenetic world out there. <laughs> people are busy. Um, yes. What would you say to someone who, would, who might say, oh, I'm just a little bit too busy to pray? Or... I'd, I'd have a lot of sympathy with them. I was yeah. like that when yeah. I first started praying, and I thought, how am I going to do this thing? So I used to write G-O-D in my diary, and if someone had a problem with it, I'd say, you can talk to G-O-D. Um, so that's sort of that. But I think when you look at how you order your day, I find the more I pray, it's a bit um, counterintuitive, but the more I pray, the more I get done. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's kind of an efficiency drive. I mean, that wouldn't be a reason to pray, mm. <laughs> but it certainly gives you a purpose yes. for your whole day. Yep. Um, and, I, and I wouldn't be without it, yep. really. Yep. Otherwise, you're just chasing your tail all day. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think, yeah, next right, you've got to acknowledge that people are genuinely too busy sometimes, you know, like, you know, particularly if you've got young children and are working, mm. you know, it is really hard to find the time. I guess at the same time, you know, going to uh, Nick's analogy of the relationship between him and his wife, you know, what would we say to Nick if he said, oh, I'm actually too busy to talk to my wife at the moment? And, mm. and, and when we'd probably say... It does happen. It does happen. <laughs> yeah. But like we'd say that even though you may be busy, like, there will be a consequence to your relationship. And, and so it's a, 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 if you are too busy to pray, I think that's fine. But ideally, we should be trying to create space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it sounds harsh, but you know it's a question of priority, I guess. Mm. So it's about balancing your genuine needs, you know, in the world, which are real and 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 and, and do affect your ability mm -hmm. to pray. But it's at the same time, in the spiritual life, prayer at least must have some role. Mm. I think, even if it's Absolutely. just two minutes, yeah. or even it's about, if it's about the way you're engaging with the mm. busyness, mm. if you can do that prayerfully. Mm. Um, yeah, but it is, it is difficult. Thanks for that. Um, so, we do talk a lot about mission and regeneration in our diocese, or we have been recently. Mm. Um, let's assume we have new people coming into our churches. H how would you encourage them to begin praying? Because it mm. seems to be a fundamental thing as you come to know God for the first time. 
Mm. We need some tools and help and encouragement to, to begin praying. Mm. I think there's, lot, there's lots of techniques, but I think the most important thing is the attitude that we bring. Okay. Mm. And, mm. I, and I would point to the Gospels where the, the story of the prodigal son, mm -hmm. where the father is earnestly waiting for the son to come home. And I think that's how God is with us. Yes. And it doesn't matter if we've got a mumbled speech. You know, the prodigal son had a bit of a mumbled speech. He, yeah. he didn't even finish the speech. The father came running to greet him and embraced yes. him. Yes. And I think if we see God like that in our lives, then we will want to pray. Yes. And I think that attitude that we bring is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think attitude is, is, is a good word to use. I think as well, for me, it's about firstly putting aside some time, even if it's a small amount of time. And then it's about listening to your intuition about what you're drawn to. You know, for some people that might be lighting a candle, it might be more contemplative forms of prayer if you're more of an introspective person. Um, or if you're really drawn to, you know, more extroverted worship, you know, things like that. It's about listening to your heart and then just going with it. And my experience is if you, if you do open up the space, you get led, you know, mm -hmm. you're just following the breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. And it isn't something that you have to do. It's not like a, you know, it's not a, just a technique to do. Mm -hmm. It's about actually listening to your heart mm -hmm. and going mm -hmm. with it. And, um, and there's no right or wrong way to do that. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to know your answers to, you know, th th this idea that, um, you know, in popular culture, you know, God is, is, is up there, mm. you know, and, and prayer then becomes a transaction, trying to get God yeah. to sort of get involved or do something, sure. you know. Mm. Mm. But as you grow in the Christian life, uh, you realise that, you know, God is, is everywhere, He's yes. with it. God's within us, God's mm. around us, God supports our every breath in a sense. Mm. So that somehow helps our understanding of how prayer works, do, does it not? Would yes. you like to comment on that? I mean, a word for me is attention. Yeah. You know, and, and you're right that God is all, is in everything and within us. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of my prayer life is around just being attentive to my experience of God in any moment. Yeah. And sometimes that attention will be, I'm really worried about this person, you know, yeah. in that case, you know, I'm more like inclined to, you know, be praying for someone. But sometimes I'm just noticing the, the remarkable nature of creation and I just want to sit in it. Yes. And so, yeah, for me, it's about that attention to what's happening in the present moment. Yeah. Because God doesn't live in the future or in the past. God is now. Sure. And it's about being sure. in the now. Nick, and further comments? Well, I think that's absolutely right. I think for me, a breakthrough point in my praying was actually listening to God uh -huh. rather than just asking for stuff. Yeah. And if I can stretch out my analogy with my wife, at some point in our marriage, I hopefully listen to my wife. Um, and I think that's the growth point of a relationship is when you actually begin to listen. Mm -hmm. So listening is very similar to attentiveness. Mm, it is. It yeah. is. I get that. Yeah. yeah. So what advice would you give to vicars and priests in charge in parishes who want to encourage their members of their congregation to, you know, delve deeper mm. in, in, into prayer. Just two or three points. Well, I that. really like what Eddie said before. <coughs> yep. I think you start with where the person is at, um, and then you grow what they're already doing. Okay. So you follow the breadcrumb trail in yep. a sense. But also, I think that we need coaches. We need people that can encourage us. Yep. So if we're clergy, yep. I think we need a spiritual director or, or someone who can yep. get alongside us and help us in our own spiritual journey. Sure. Because I think if we're not picking up the breadcrumbs, it's very hard to direct other people yes. to those breadcrumbs. Yes. I think as well, I mean, I'm the director of a retreat centre, and so I'm going to say retreats. <laughs> but I do just come across people so frequently who haven't had any, they've been in the world so much. Yes. And then they just take two days just to join a silent retreat or just take some time. And they're like, oh, I get this now. Like, I'm actually mm -hmm. experiencing it. So. Mm -hmm. I think taking a moment aside is important, yeah. in whatever capacity to be that is. I think as well for, for people to, for, for vicars and, and people in leadership positions to help lead people, and it's about just giving space for people in different ways, because mm -hmm. people respond to different types of prayer. Mm -hmm. you know? So setting aside an evening to explore contemplative prayer, or someone to come in and mm -hmm. say, this is you know, the Ignatian stuff, or like, mm -hmm. you know, this, is, this is the, you know, how, intercession works and people will be drawn to particular things. Right. Um, I think our personalities and our stages of life draw us into different ways of prayer, so having as many doors open for people mm -hmm. as possible. That's great advice. Thank you. Um, just a couple of other final questions. Um, how do we take prayer deeper? 
You may have mentioned a few things already. Mm. You might want to expand on that a little bit more. I, I mean, I, <clears throat> I guess in many ways it depends what you mean by deeper. I mean, I associate deep prayer with contemplative prayer. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, contemplative prayer in many ways, you know, Nick mentioned before about listening. Contemplative prayer is about deep listening, I think. And it's about taking more extended periods of time where you really do try and turn your attention away from yourself and your everyday mm -hmm. concerns and just focusing inwards mm -hmm. and listening to what's happening in there. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, a, there's, there's a necessity for courage with that as well, because mm -hmm. often what we find is challenging. Um, contemplative prayer and that deep prayer is actually about transformation. It's about allowing the spirit to work okay. within us to change us. Okay. And that's, that for me is, that's, that's a very important part of the church's yeah, yeah. prayer life. It's encouraging yeah. people to be, to allow themselves to be transformed. Yeah, yeah. I think for leaders in the church too, it's really important that we talk about our spiritual experiences. Yeah. For mm. some reason, which I don't really understand, we've got shy about talking about them. Yeah. And I think if someone shares from the pulpit or mm. in a home group or whatever their spiritual experience, mm. it gives mm. other people courage mm. on their journey because we're all having spiritual experiences mm. every day, mm. but for some reason we don't talk about mm. it. We're a bit, we're a bit uh, embarrassed to think, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. So mm. it's interesting too that we've got um, you know, the Dyson Mission Action Plan. It's got a lot of things we've got to do and mm. they're highly activity orientated. Yes. How do we relate the DMAP to what we're talking about today, which is something, it sounds though, like something slightly different. <laughs> I, I don't think it's different at all. I think it's, I think the DMAT's wonderful, but I think that when we sit in prayer, we could ask God, what is it you'd have me do today in mission? Yeah. Mm. So that God is directing our mission. Yeah. Because I think God's in the DMAP, but mm. I think we can't do it all every day. Yeah, yeah. So it's just getting that direction, that sense yeah. of, of yeah. God's guidance in yeah. our lives. And the deep matters, it's, it's, like, like, it's like we've got a plans for a new building, right? Well, we're going to build something and it's going to be something great. But you've got to have a foundation, right? Mm -hmm. And so the prayer is the foundation. Mm. You, you do it from prayer. Mm. And, and, and so, but if you wouldn't just have a foundation, right? And so you need both, you know? So you start with the prayer, deepens the experience. It means that people are receptive to what's unfolding and how yep. this steam app is coming about. And then you can build on top of that. And okay. you'd have a plan if you were doing a building, wouldn't you? Ideally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So final question, uh, what further help and encouragement is available for people want to ex wanting to explore prayer a little bit more? Mm. Well, there's so much, but I would, I would come back to having a mentor or a coach or okay. a spiritual director. Because I think, as Eddie said, sometimes when you learn to pray or, or you grow in prayer, mm. difficult things can come up. Mm. And so we need someone. You wouldn't go to the Commonwealth Games without a coach. Mm. And it's the same with sure. prayer. I think sure. you need someone alongside you. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it is, it is good to have someone to help, whether that is a spiritual director or your vicar or someone you know who's yeah. good at this. I mean, there is lots of online resources and things like that sure. as well. Um, but I think the main thing is about setting aside time mm. and seeing what happens. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, Nick was just talking there about, we don't talk about our spiritual experiences. But my experience is that if you do open a space for it, stuff just happens. Mm -hmm. It's actually a real thing. And, mm -hmm. um, and if you follow that, mm -hmm. you'll get what you need, whether mm -hmm. that is a spiritual direction coming into your life mm -hmm. or someone in the church or whatever it is, mm -hmm. just being open and receptive. And mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Thank you so much, uh, Eddie and Nick, for your encouragement uh, around prayer and how that relates to the mission of, of our church. It's been really helpful, really useful. I'm sure our, our viewers will have uh, been greatly encouraged. Thanks it's a real pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank cool. you.